So what we're going to do here is we're, I actually have the negative all set up. It's ready to go. It's focused. All we have to do is put a piece of paper in there, expose it, and process it. But what we're going to do, what, what our aim is, is to produce this image and this image by just changing the blue and green contrast relationship. Same negative. It's not even coming out of the enlarger. And we're going to process it. And you're going to get this much um, of a difference. No, permanent, uh, no dodging and burning whatsoever. So let's turn the lights off and we'll, I'll see you on the other side. So as we learned in an earlier segment, we are always going to uh, expose with the green or the soft contrast first. In this case, the negative is already predetermined and set. It's focused. We're ready to go. I know that this particular print requires F16 with five seconds of the low contrast exposure. So right now we're exposing for the five seconds at F16. That's going to be followed by another five seconds with the blue contrast. Okay, so I'm about to expose the final uh, hard contrast number five filtration, which is the blue light, for only five seconds. It's hard to see because it's just the, the way the color is. Um, but it's kind of a deep blue, almost magenta with this Ilford 500 head. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to expose with the same negative, but a more high contrast version of the same scene. In this scheme, the soft contrast, the green exposure, is only one and a half seconds at the same F16. So you, you, you'll begin to see the relationship is going to take a, 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 a very biased, uh, it will be very biased towards the higher contrast. Now the blue exposure, which is the number five, the high contrast, is going to be 14 and a half seconds. So you can see when you combine those two relationships, this second print is almost all hard contrast. That's where you're going to get the deep, um, darker center area behind the uh, behind the globe. So I'm about to bring over both both exposures. One is the hard contrast rendering and one is the soft contrast rendering. Just to be certain in the terminology, soft contrast light is green. Hard contrast light is blue. Same negative, just a different contrast scheme in the prints that I've exposed. They're going in at one. So in about a minute's time, we should we should be able to see some kind of a uh, a direction that the print is going to take. So, bear in mind, each one of these prints has not been split printed. It's been printed to a specific print contrast. The the split printing. The split contrast printing comes into effect when, when you print different areas of a print with different contrast relationships. But I think you should be able to begin to see the power of the contrast, the, the varying contrast that are in the paper. Just by changing the exposure, we've dramatically changed the finished print. So for those for those that are that are used to printing with multi-contrast papers but have never split printed, let's say this particular image is more like a grade one and a half, whereas this, this particular rendering is more like a grade four. But bear in mind, nothing has been split contrast printed yet. The split contrast really only comes into play to correct areas of the print that you're not pleased with. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we got the white lights on over here. So it's a full two minutes of development. That's what I like to do in my process. 
the, uh, the the end result when you split tone something it's it takes on a very important com part to have full developed prints. So now we're into the fixer and in just a couple of seconds we should be able to uh, to turn the house lights on and we'll get a pretty good idea of just how flexible and dramatic multi-contrast papers can be. I don't personally like to take um, the prints right out of the fixer and put it on my white viewing board. I like to give it a little bit of a preliminary wash, get some of the heavy fixer off it. The reason I say that is because down the road finished prints that I've, I've, I've manipulated and finished printed are going to reside on this white piece of plexiglass so that I can get a relationship with this light on. So at the end of all printing sessions, finished prints do go up on there. That's why I get a little um, fussy about making sure that the, uh, the prints are as clean as I can get them. So I can turn on the house lights now. So, I think you'll be able to see, once again, no split contrast printing done. This is just, think of it as a grade one, one and a half, whatever. It's a grade one print, this is a grade four print. So, depending on the, the relationship, the contrast scheme is what I call it. This was four seconds of soft contrast green light and five seconds of blue hard contrast light. This was two and a half seconds of soft contrast green contrast light and 20 seconds of hard contrast blue light. So you, you can see the relationship is heavily biased in this print towards hard contrast. In this print it's heavily biased towards the soft contrast. So as I say, that, that's, a, that's a striking difference from the same well-designed negative. Now, if you, if you have a negative that's maybe not as designed as perfectly as mine are for the multi-contrast products, you might not have this much flexibility. So, um, we're going to learn about what my negative design uh, exactly entails in other segments, but Rest assured, every one of my negatives is designed for a specific end result, but it has flexibility on either side, which allows the split contrast component of the printing process to really manipulate little tiny small areas of the print. Let's look at the outer edge of this print, where you can see it doesn't have nearly as much detail or gray tone as the hard contrast print. And what you would have to do, this is where the split contrast correction would come in. You would take a card and you would just direct light towards the outer arch. Much easier to do than the inner arch, where you would just add some density with the soft contrast and also the hard contrast to get a little bit more definition in here like you do here. That would, that would bring that print more to completion. Now, when you look at this other, this other uh, rendering, Think, think back to your graded paper days when you only had one grade of paper that you could uh, choose from. The only way, if you didn't have a properly designed negative to give you this print, the only way that you could affect that dark a, a um, background, which naturally projects the lamp um, forward, the only way you could do that would be to uh, burn in that area. But when you introduce all these, these um, the pattern of the railing in front, it's virtually impossible to get this dark area to match this dark area because all of the railing would go to a medium or a, a lighter gray, which would immediately give you the sensation that the print has been man manipulated. So getting back to the multi-contrast paper, it is so flexible if your negative is properly designed to produce or to take advantage 
of the flexibility of the paper. And that's where I believe my process is, um, has been exploited. I've learned, I've learned what negatives work best with multi-contrast papers, and that's how I design my negatives. That's not to say that I don't do plus and minus development, because I do. What I am saying is my negative densities are all targeted towards a fixed um, numeric value of somewhere between 0.9 and 0 0.10 in the highlights, which traditionally is a much flatter negative than uh, what we used to create with the uh, for traditional graded paper. So, as you will learn once you once you see my whole video series, everything is tied together. It's not you can't just learn how to make a negative and not worry about how to print. You can't just learn how to print and not worry about how to make a negative. Everything in my process is tied together. They play off of one another, and I really believe that that's why my prints tend to separate themselves from, from many other people.